All right. Time. Hi. So good to see you. Over my years of competition, even as an Indonesian, I had my doubts in trying to serve our own coffee at the highest level. The problem lies in generic tasting coffees that we have back home due to the coffee varieties that we have, as well as the processing methods that we choose to do to them. All of them are geared towards high yield and fast turnovers. But I knew we could do something about this. And as the saying goes that if you want to see change, you be change. So I gathered my own team of agents of change and together we spent years trying to make coffee that one day can shatter all of our doubts and prove us all wrong. And I'm happy to say to you that that day is today. So we're going to start with our signature beverage to see what is possible. We're going to use coffee from the same Indonesian region throughout. So I'll tell you more information about the coffee as we move along. For your signature beverage, we're going to use a traditional full wash Indonesian coffee. All right, for now, let me introduce you to my team that together are changing the Indonesian coffee landscape. The first member of the team comes from the Microbial Biotechnology Unit at the Bandung Institute of Technology. This is in West Java in Indonesia. Now, together, we have determined three groups of microbiome that can potentially change the way we ferment coffee. Today, they are represented by some dry ingredients in front of you on the left-hand side that we will brew as a tea later on. All right, let's dig in. The first group of microbiome comes from the genus of Bacillus. Now, Bacillus, they break down polysaccharides in coffee fermentation into oligosaccharides. And this makes for a creamier cup of coffee. Today, they are represented by dried honeysuckle for their ability to improve the tactile of our tea. The second group of microbiomes comes from the genus of Klebsiella. Now, Klebsiella, they break down pectin in coffee fermentation into monosaccharides. And this is responsible for sweetness in our coffee. Today, they are represented by clove and marron flower for their dried fruit quality. Now the third group of microbiomes and perhaps the most interesting comes from the genus of Pichia. Now Pichia is a yeast-like fungi and has this awesome ability to create beautiful floral and fruit notes. They do this by metabolizing available micronutrients into volatile aromatic compounds while at the same time they are producing less lactic acid. Alright judges, now I'm going to do the uh, signature beverage preparation and in the meantime I'll let you catch on with your note writing. All the relevant information are on the box in front of you on the left hand side. Thank you. Yeah, this kind of like is uh, in the recorder screen, so you cannot touch it. <coughs> Please prepare it, huh? I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip this. <coughs> no, it's on Twitch. Huh? Yeah. Uh, when you record it, you want to No. All right, now we're going to build our signature beverage. For that, I'm pouring four shots of your espresso, made using 21 grams of coffee to 42 grams of espresso over these whiskey rocks to cool it down slightly. Also, we're going to brew our ingredients, 100 grams of 80 degrees Celsius water to release all of its beautiful flavors. While waiting for this to brew, we're going to make an inoculated espuma to improve the texture of your beverage. 
but we have a few different ingredients. For mixed berry reduction, made using eco part raspberry and blueberry. We boil this over eco part water to sugar, and halfway through, we add the balsamic vinegar for complexity of sweetness, 10% of this balsamic vinegar. Into this, we're adding two parts of tropical fruit reduction, made using mango and snake fruit. Now, snake fruit is native to Indonesia, so if you haven't seen one before, there's one in front of you to see as a reference. All right, now we're going to inoculate this mixture to transform the flavor. We're using 300 microliter of Ecopart Bacillus, Klebsiella, and Pichia. Now these microbes, they thrive under anaerobic environment. So we're going to seal this container, charge it with nitrogen to speed up the inoculation. This still takes a couple of days to finish, so we have a second set right here ready for us to use today. All right, now I'm mixing the tisane with our coffee to provide a liquid base for your signature beverage. In each glass, you will receive 44 grams of liquid base and we're adding 20 grams of our inoculated espuma. Now judges, when you drink this later on, please drink in three sips, swirling vigorously 10 times before you take each sip. Now the reason why I asked you to do this is because there will be a transformation of flavor. In the beginning, you will get sparkling orange like orangina and peach. On the second and the third sip, you get bergamot and grape candy. Alright, that is for you. That is yours. Let's see. And that's yours. Please go ahead, enjoy this drink. It's so so good. Alright folks, now let's move on to our second course. This is our milk course. For this course, please only assess the visual when I serve to you, but wait for my instructions on when to enjoy it. Your milk beverage is being made with 20 grams of coffee for a shot 30 grams of espresso. We're using 140 ml cups to get a harmonious balance between the espresso and the sweet milk that we are using today. The flavors that you'll get in there are vanilla, almond, and chocolate coated orange. Now for this course, we ask folks like yourself on what they would like to taste in our Indonesian coffee. Turn out, they would like to taste a refined chocolate flavor as well as some fruit sweetness to balance that. So we figured we could achieve this through post-harvest processing, our second agent of change, and you can see how we process that in the middle section of the box in front of you. So we started by inoculating whole coffee cherry with a mixture of one part bacillus one part clap 
and 10 part pH. Now this is to put a fruity fermentation precursor inside of our coffee. There you go. Then we put this coffee inside a 1000 liter water tank and seal it to create an anaerobic environment. Very similar to the way we did our signature beverage. There you go, please wait for my instruction. Then we let the fermentation continue until 3.8 pH, allowing us to bring out a lot of acetic acid, giving a chocolatey flavor in our coffee. We then take the coffee out, we dry them for six weeks as natural coffee. This way for my instruction. And it's long and slow dry. This was allowing us to bring out that fruity flavor that we have in the coffee. Alright, now judges, please use your right hand spoon to stir the milk beverage 10 times clockwise. Please go ahead and enjoy. You can put the spoon back to where it came. Thank you. That's a serving box. We made it here in Indonesia and brought it to Italy just now. <laughs> yeah, you finish the one. I told you to finish the one. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 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 How do you know you don't even drink coffee? You said coffee doesn't drink. Alright, let's move on to our final course, your espresso course. Again, for this course, please wait for my instructions on when to enjoy the coffee. But you can assess the crema straight away. Your milk beverage is being made with 20.5 grams of coffee to yield 48 grams out in 90.6 gra uh, 90 degrees Celsius water. This is to bring up all of its flavor. This course is made slightly differently to your milk course. We started the same way, we used the same inoculant with a little bit more pH in it, but we stopped the fermentation at 4.2 pH, allowing us to be right inside the malolactic fermentation window. Now this window converts a harsh lactic acid into a softer, creamier version of itself. There you go. Now this gives you a taste experience of soft fiber and acidity throughout with a medium plus sweetness and a retro nasal sensation of fruits. The flavors that you'll get, they are grape candy, plums, and also round and juicy texture with a lingering aftertaste of green grapes and you also get pineapple juice inside of your taste. Alright folks, now it is time for us to meet our final and most important agent of change. They are the heroes of this story, the people who helped create me this coffee. They are the people of the Manggarai region in Flores in, in Indonesia. Together we process this coffee in a little town called Rutai which is surrounded by mountains where our coffees are from. Uh, this coffee is a Kartika cultivar. It is a Katimor hybrid that is very common back home. Left alone, it is generic, but now we can improve that through our methods. This year, through the work that we do in the region, we are directly affecting 700 coffee farmers in the area. I can only hope that through the work that we do here today, and the work that we'll continue to do tomorrow, you and I will all be agents of change in impacting many more lives in Indonesia and beyond. Now please stir your espresso 20 times using your other spoon, take three sips, 
Go ahead, enjoy. Mahalsa. Thank you, Mikael Jassin from Indonesia. Mikael. Oh, oh. haven't done that in a while. <laughs> It's been two years. I know. Yeah, so does it feel different? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I think um, from Boston, now you, you know you know what to do, but also you have pressure, people expect more from you, but you know. No, we don't. <laughs> Maybe not you. So, cool. <laughs> so would you like to thank some people at home? Oh, a lot of people, um, especially the folks who helped me make the coffee. Um, mm -hmm. Andre, the processor, is actually a driver. Oh, um, he owns the processing farm. So I think people back home are watching my team mm -hmm. who helped create that box. My fiance also created that box. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, Vincente will have a longer talk with you later on. And now I will talk with your coach. Yeah. Let's join us in the seats. Thank you very much, Thank Mikael. You, Thank, Thank you. you.